Hi, I'm Sophie and welcome to The Countdown. Coming up in this episode, the Mayan apocalypse that will never be, the moon's battered past, and green bean galaxies. But first... For all those who have been dreaming of venturing into space, now is the time. For as little as $750 million, you could be the first person to step on the moon in 40 years. Golden Spike, a private spaceflight company, announced that by 2020, it will be ready to take tourists to the moon. This company is proposing to take two-person teams per trip and banking on already existing rockets and capsules to do the task. Even though no existing space vehicles are currently capable of a lunar landing, SpaceX's soon-to-be-launched Falcon rocket might fit the bill. Currently, the company is targeting foreign countries who could send a team of two representatives, either for research or national pride. What would you do on the moon? Let us know in the comments below. On December 5th, NASA released a cloud-free animation of the Earth at night. It was created by stitching together two months of data from VERS, the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite satellite. Rather than tell you more about it, let's just watch. This is the moon, and this is the moon on Gravity Cam. NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, better known as GRAIL, has mapped the gravity field of the moon, revealing that this orb is even more battered than it looks to the naked eye. For the GRAIL mission, twin probes, dubbed Ebb and Flo, flew over the moon's surface in formation, measuring how mountains and craters changed the distance between them. The satellites even detected changes in the lunar soil density. In addition to producing a colorful gravity map, GRAIL's findings reveal the moon's crust is thin and porous, probably due to being pulverized by many ancient impacts. And if the young moon took a lot of hits, chances are that Earth and other planets in our solar system suffered a similar beating. In the comments from last episode, YouTuber PurpleFeistyGirl820 asked about this whole Mayan apocalypse nonsense. Apparently, a TV show stated the Earth is going to end on December 21st because the Sun is in alignment with the Earth and there are solar flares going on, etc, etc. First, there's no end to the Mayan calendar. It's in the shape of a wheel with one long cosmic cycle. The cycle does end on the 21st, but when you've gone all the way around, you just give the wheel another turn and start a new one. Second, the sun and the moon line up with the Earth all the time. It's a phenomenon called syzygy, and it happens twice a month. All the planets come close to lining up every 500 years, but this isn't even going to happen on the 21st. As for solar flares, they're part of the sun's normal activity and get stronger over a cycle of 11 years. Fortunately, we're protected from them by the Earth's magnetosphere, although they can cause problems for satellites. Finally, I'll leave you with this thought from NASA engineer Don Yeomans, who has investigated these rumors. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Since the beginning of recorded time, there have been literally hundreds of thousands of predictions for the end of the world. And we're still here. Astronomers have discovered a new kind of galaxy that glows bright green. In many galaxies, the energy from a central black hole makes the gas around it glow. But in the adorably named green bean galaxies, the black hole is in the process of switching off. As it dims, the black hole's energy disperses, lighting up gas throughout the galaxy. It's a radioactive echo that will eventually fade as the radiation passes out into space. When scientists first glimpsed an entirely glowing galaxy through the Canada-France-Hawaii telescope, they were floored. They had to travel to the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope to find out more about this object, named J2240. 
Then they had to go to a third telescope, Gemini South, to confirm the existence of more green beans. It turns out that these new galaxy types are incredibly rare. If you drew a cube with sides 1.3 billion light years long, it would contain only a single green bean galaxy. And that's your countdown. For links to all of these stories and more, visit scientificamerican.com slash the countdown. The link's below. And while you're here, subscribe to the Space Lab channel or watch another video. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick. See you on December 22nd. <laughs>